I am a man made of sea and earth and sky. I have become a man of the 20th century. I am a happy man, unlike the slave of centuries gone by. Whether laboring with my hands in business or profession as artist matters not, for I am learning what it takes for happiness. I work with brain and hands to simplify and clarify my purpose here, to build a better world. Stone on stone that thrust toward the sky, we build to lengthen life, to live it still more easily, for I love life. Compared to all the past, my daily life is more than man could dream. No king could know the riches now available to common man. Our earth is bursting with a new creativeness, unlimited imagination, with daily probes forever searching for new ways to liberate mankind from all the bondage to the labor of his hands. How long can we extend our life and mankind reach its dreams for all tomorrows? These are questions asked and answers waited by each age, exciting every generation still to come. No exception is my eager questioning. With all man's restless rushing into space in illimitability, but now a chilling bitterness. How hope to have this life of mine extend into the next century, to reach the time when man breaks through and ushers in the age of space, when mind and spirit shall be free. And why can't I remain for this divine experience for mankind? Patience, yet a little while. You still have much to learn. You still must search and find. For I am you, your living self in all the centuries, the 21st and endless others still to come. You think your life and mind and all you know are miracles, but actually they're but seeds of growth and chain reaction. But come with me, O oh man, so eager now to find and see the realms of fiction become reality, become things that until now were dreams. Where do you lead me now? Or are we in the age of space, already at the horizon of century 21? To whisk you into future time, we'll use the fastest mass transportation of earthbound man's invention, a high-speed system on one rail. Hold your hat and watch your balance now, for here we speed by monorail into the century 21. stop on our way is an average home in the new century. But why start here? Can't you show me more exciting things? Hardly more exciting now. For in the home you'll find the fundamental changes in the life of every day. For you must realize they're all important influence everywhere. Homes are built no longer bound to the ground. For here they are demountable. Whenever you would move, both house and furniture can go together. The houses are assembled by interlocking rooms as units, with every room electrothermally heated with cooling systems and lighting units built into the walls. And as the family life and size will change, so can the rooms be added or removed. But now, let's walk around the house.
we approach the front entrance, a closed-circuit television set is activated by a sonic signal and master control unit. This informs the people we are coming. I don't see a door. Where is the entrance? You wonder, don't you? There is no ordinary entrance door. The door operates by remote control and slides back into the wall as we approach. A curtain of air serves as an individual barrier preventing either hot or cold air entering the home. But let us look at the lighting system. How different from ours today. Electroluminescence lights the room. It changes both the mood and spirit. Illumination may be changed to suit conditions for dining, entertaining, or may be brightened for a festival affair. really challenging. But tell me, is there no radio nor television in this home? Not as you know it. We still have broadcasting, but no sets anymore. Receivers? Yes. Like this little matchbox in my hand. Speakers for our high fidelity. Stereo broadcasting are just two tiny pellets sized like a pill. They may be placed in curtains or in draperies. The television screens are part of architecture and interior furnishings. See this painting? It converts into a television screen when you wish. All these rooms are more than interesting, but this one looks exceptional. We don't have such rooms in homes today. What is it? Well, this is the executive room of the house. In here, all business affairs take place. From here, by communication satellites, participating conferences are televised by global closed circuit from the office of the company downtown to remote points like Hong Kong, London, New York, and almost any place within the business world. But tell me, how does a man make such remote connections? It's a stimulating, great experience. We are very, very proud of our phone system that is televised. Notice first, every baby born in the century 21 receives a birthday gift of his own phone number. This is his for life. No similar number will exist for any Earth-born individual. Whether you remain at home, where messages can come by TV phone, or traveling, receiving calls over your own radio wrist phone, the call will always be transmitted on your private individual number by simply speaking the number into the phone. Hear how it works. <laughs> Thank you. 
fascinated by the grand development of world communication. I believe you. But this is only one important phase of myriad activities from this room. All your old-time errands around the house and operation of professional matters are replaced by the master control unit. Simply speak into the telephone and it will operate appliances even though you're miles from home. Do you see this little speaker with a wheel around it? Yes. What is it? This is the automaton robot of our time. It connects you with your robot servant, which is none other than a number connection. Your number connection with the community computer center. This giant computer takes care of the community's milk delivery, car maintenance, tax returns, banking, secretarial jobs, and even your own body's medical care and disease prevention. But this seems unbelievable. And how about my own physician? He knows all about you, as he receives complete reports from the community computer about each of his patients. You will receive immediate warning before any sickness hits you. But let us return to the community computer. Just feed it with the data. It will do the work better than any human being. Really, I grow more and more confused. Of course you are. Man's actions and reactions always depend upon the standards of the time in which he lives. This century is no exception, since man must grow into every change of values. And what a beautiful weather. As this is winter time, how can you have such warm sunshine and blue cloudless skies? Because our weather is controlled. Rain is released at certain hours mostly at night with regulated quantities. Wait a short while, then you can experience the change in weather now.
Now let me show you a new department store. Let's take the new car to get there. It looks like a vehicle, but what is this? Yes, this is the automobile of century 21st. There is no gasoline motor inside. It has not even wheels. No, because it does not need them. It creates its own gravity-free fields as it travels, using air jets to control height, direction, and speed. The car is powered by high-frequency radio waves beamed from transmitting towers. This electric power costs very little since it is generated by atomic energy. ride of my life. Here we are at the United Supermarket Department Store. But before we enter, may I warn you, you will pass an unseen thermoelectric wall. This will clean your clothes from all the pollen and foreign particles. It filters all incoming air, removing dirt and dust. Thanks for mentioning it. <laughs> Interesting, I, I don't see any stapled merchandise and no sales personnel. None of them. First, take from this machine your own computer order form. If you have not made up your mind or are uncertain about a gift you wish to make, just give the characteristics and the data about a certain person into a special computer. In less than 15 seconds, you'll receive a list of gift suggestions. But let's uh, walk around. All merchandise is shown by samples under glass. Prices are noted. Selections are made by slipping your form into the opening of each exhibit. Push the necessary buttons to designate size and quantity, a knot, and the punched holes in your form show your order. All orders are manipulated by machine. No human hand is ever touching your merchandise. It arrives at your home in time. Delivery, accounting, and even payment. All is taken care of by the computer system of the store in connection with your number at the community computer center. Let's go shopping. center empty-handed is a grand feeling, knowing that all the goods of a rich world are waiting for me at home in the world of tomorrow. Surely it is. Services rendered is an important part of an automated, developed, and functioning society. Without it, the whole machinery is doomed to decay. Don't I hear some music? Peculiarly rhythmic? It sounds like dance music from some magic land. You are right. It is a kind of entertainment music, piped expressly for dancing, and it serves the entertainment hall of this community shopping center. What is the name of the dance? The Dapper Dandler.
sounded lively and exotic. Now where are we going to go from here? I did not mention until now the three greatest breakthroughs in science which really changed the life on Earth. Let's take the first, in energy. Since earliest existence, man has looked for ways to add energy to his muscle power. Wars were fought, men were killed, and civilizations ruined to rule such properties. Thanks to the curiosity and industry of man, we solved the conflict by the general usage of atomic energy, by seizing power from the sun and generating power from the waters of the sea. These are the least expensive ways to help a people thirsty for water, heat, and energy. We shall visit one of the thousands of smaller centers of atomic reactors spread around the Earth. But these atomic centers are using direct power from the hydrogen fusion process, not like in your time when you used the heat conversion method of old, old uranium fission. <laughs> which our forefathers could scarcely dream in all their wildest fantasies. Let me show you still another scientific breakthrough, the opening of the underwater world. It is indeed a world of the wondrous new, assuring us of unlimited tons of nourishing foods at low prices. You can admire our new water factories that bring fresh water to the thirsty deserts of the world. This new food and usage of the water world must surely change the silence of the deeps. And this is also one more fallacy of your darkened century. There never was and never is a silence in the underwater deeps. How would you like to listen to the talk of fishes, porpoises, the chattering of shrimps, catfishes, and the whole chorus from the populations in the sea? It would really sound interesting. All right, then. Listen.
we arrive at the third breakthrough, the greatest achievement of century 21st, space travel. One of the most interesting effects of such interplanetary travel was the proof that Albert Einstein had been right. He discovered time and aging are but relative, and that one who travels into space would be changed in time and age relations to his counterpart, the man who stays behind on Earth. The seas of space have now become man's new frontiers with a vast infinity of possibilities in forces, powers, and discoveries. You mean to say that the conditions under which we live and age on Earth have not the same effects upon the man in space? Exactly. Therefore, the years on Earth and the years in space are different as the universe of matter grows self-conscious and the aging process comes nearer to the pulse of the cosmos and becomes slowed down in comparison to the faster years on Earth. Both time and space are telescoped into an awe-inspiring whole. Rocket travel to distant places on the Earth and Moon has become a daily business. Global mail service is done mainly by rockets. The countdown has become a part of daily life. We shouldn't like to miss it. For me, the departure of a rocket ship will always be the most profoundly stimulating symbol and effect upon the psyche of mankind, the agents of man's destiny. And we have found another glamour in our way of life. In our outreaching for the stars, mankind has found the polar star of love. All the technological, electronic, and atomic mysteries were finally used to overcome man's oldest enemy, the enemy of ignorance and hate. No longer is there any business in hate, and consequently, no more war. With every new achievement, love spreads everywhere because it is creative and unites all consciousness. Love was slowly found to be so practical as wisdom matches science. Having taken the first steps into the distant realms of space, man could never then turn back. Our century 21st has been a greater renaissance and now is waiting our commands. But still its single greatest step has been into the realm of universal love. Thank you. 